Hi, welcome to my video on the review of Factory One. As with all my units that I do, after all the videos are gone through, at the end I do a review. And the review of each of my uh, units can be treated as a test or an assignment. So I have five pages, one of five, this is the first one. So if you get five blank pages, pause the video right now and fill in this information right here. And then on the other pages, as we do, uh, fill in those questions, one, two, five, seven, eight, whatever, do the answers, and then put the score on the right side. And when you're finished each page, total up the number at the bottom. And then when you're finished the whole review, you can add up your bottom scores, put it over 59, convert it to a decimal by dividing denominator into numerator, and then move your decimal places two places to the right, and you'll get a percent to see how well you're doing on each of my units. So let's start. Page two of five. Right now, pause the video. You can do this for each question, or you can do it for the whole page. So you can do question one, pause the video, work the answers out, then do, uh, just put the score in, then do question two by pausing the video, work them out, and then press play to get all the answers and put your score in. So it's your choice. And But notice at the end, right at the bottom, I have a total of 14. And that's good for each page. So let's start. Let's do the review of factory in one. Find the numerical GCF of each. So we take the smallest number, which is 9, the factors of 9 are 1 times 9 and 3 times 3. 9 is not a factor of 15, so is 3 a factor? Yes. So 3 is the GCF of both of these. 3 is a factor of 9 and a factor of 15. We have a 10 and a 15, so we take the smallest number, which is 10, 1, 10, 2, and 5. 10 is not a factor of 15. 2 is not, is not even, so 2 is not, so 5 is the GCF of both of those. 8, 6, and 15. Let's look at the 6. 6 is the smallest number, so 1 times 6 and 2 times 3. 6 is not a factor of 8. Is 2 a factor of 8? Yes, but 2 is not a factor of 15. 3 is a factor of 8? Nope. And so there's the only GCF in this one is a 1. 1 is the only GCF. If there's neither number common, 1 is always a GCF of every example. Put your score over here, what you had. Number 2, find a variable or literal GCF of each. So we have a variable of x in each term. So we write down x and the smallest exponent is 1. So that comes out to be just x. B, I have an x in every term, so I write down the x. And the smallest exponent of these three is a 3, because the smallest exponent is in the largest. Notice x to the 4 is x cubed times x, and x to the 5 is x cubed times x squared. So the smallest exponent, if the variable is common, the smallest one is in the larger ones. So the GCF is x cubed. I'm going to write down x cubed again. C has two variables, so we check with the x. x is common in each term, and the smallest exponent is a 1. We have a y in each term. The smallest exponent is a 3. So the GCF is, sorry, x, y cubed. Even though I put the 1 there, I didn't have to. So that's an x. 1 is understood. x to the power of 1. Put your score over. Number 3, find the GCF. Now, we're, we're working on both of them, the numerical and the literal. So when I look at a 4 and a 10, I see a 4. 4 is the smallest number. Factors of 4 are 1 and 4, 2 and 2. Is 4 a factor of 10? No. Is 2 a factor of 10? Yes. So GCF between 4 and 10 is 2. There's a variable in each term. We write it down. The smallest exponent is 2. So the GCF is 2x squared. We have a 12 and a 30. The smallest number is 12. So 12 is 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. 
Let's take the largest one. Is 12 a factor of 30? No. Is 6 a factor of 30? Yes. So the largest factor that's left after 12 is 6. So 6 is a GCF, numerical. The literal, A is common to both terms. So we write down the A. And the smallest exponent is 4. So the GCF of these two terms is 6A to the 4th. C, I have a 15, 45, and 30. So I see a 15 is a factor of 45 and of 30. So the GCF of these three numbers is 15. We have an X in each one of the terms. The smallest exponent is a 1. So there's the GCF. Score your how many marks you got. Put it on top. Now let's factor each. Factor means to express as a product. So I look for a GCF, which is the first rule in factoring. So we take out the 2. The 2 is a factor of 2 and of 10. So 2x divided by 2 is x. 10 divided by 2 is 5. And to check, multiply back 2 times x, 2x. 2 times 5, 10. Because the 2 is distributed in through these two terms. The GCF here is a 1 is the numerical. And I have an x in each term. So that's a 1. So I take out an x. x squared divided by x is x. Negative 4x divided by x is just negative 4. Notice, this is a 2, and that's a 1. So inside here, I take 1 away, so that's a 1 and a constant. Perfect. Multiply back. x times x, x squared. x times negative 4, negative 4x. Notice I have an x here. I do not need 1 here, because a negative 4 times x will give me negative 4x. C, the smallest number is 3. Is 3 a factor of 12? Yes. 15? Yes. So 3 is a GCF. There's an X, but no other X. So I don't have to do any variables. Once you, once you look at that X there, if it's not in either one of these, then you stop. You don't have to worry about looking at the Y and the A. Look at the first one and see if it's in the rest. 3X divided by 3 is X. Negative 12Y divided by 3 is negative 4Y. And 15A divided by 3 is a plus 5A. D, I have an 8. Factors of 8 are 1 and 8, 2 and 4. Is 8 a factor of 20? No. And the next largest is a 4. 4 is a factor of 20, so 4 is the numerical GCF. I have an X in every term, so I take the X out. And the smallest exponent of 3 and 2 is a 2. 8X cubed divided by 4X squared is a 2X. 20x squared divided by 4x squared is just a 5. Notice, again, it's 3, 2 going down, so it's 1 and a constant. And if you multiply back, you get 8x cubed, multiply by 5, and you get a 20x squared. So notice, I have an x here, therefore that's no, there's no x needed here, because I already have my x squared. E, I have no number, only a 1, so I have an x in every term. The smallest exponent of x is a 1. I have a y in each term, so I put down a y. The smallest exponent is 4. I have an a cubed in each term, so a cubed is in both terms, so we take an a cubed. And you take x squared and divide by x, I get an x. y to the 4th divided by y to the 4th cancels, cancels. So I do not need any more y's here or any more a's. So x times x is x squared minus I already have an x, so x divided by x is 1. y to the 5, take away 4 is 1y, y to the 1, and I don't need any more a's. So there's a GCF times x minus y. We'll give you these two terms here. Put your score of 5 here when you do. Add all these numbers up to see how much you have out of 14. Let's continue. And as... As the videos are done in my unit, I've also made the review in line with the videos. So the questions are in line with my videos in case if you made errors or you want to go back and review, you can go back and uh, look up that video on that particular uh, question. So this is on the negative GCF. You should not have a negative in your leading terms of any polynomial if you're going to factor. So. That's a negative, understood to be negative 1, so I'm taking a negative out. 
actually I'm taking a negative one out of your thing. So when you take a negative out, you change the negative to a positive and the positive to a negative. You change the signs. Think of that as a negative one. Negative one times x is negative x. Negative one times negative two plus. So when you take the negative out, that becomes a positive and that becomes a negative. It's like adding on the opposite. B, I have a negative in my leading term, so I take it out. And 5 is a factor of 15, so 5 is a GCF numerical, and I have an X in every term, so I take the X out. And the smallest exponent of X is a 1, so I have a negative 5 is the GCF. So negative 5X squared divided by negative 5X is just X. And negative divided by negative is a positive. 15 divided by 5 is 3, and the X is cancel. So if you multiply back, negative 5x times x, perfect. Negative 5x times 3, perfect. Again, when you take the negative out, that becomes a plus, and that becomes a plus. We're going to remove the negative because it's the leading, it's in the uh, first term. And I see a 6 common, and I see an a common. So negative 6a is the GCF of these two. When I divide, I just get an x. Negative divided by negative is positive. I divide again, and positive divided by negative is a negative, and 6a divided by 6a is 1. Notice I have it put a 1 here. If there's two terms here, there has to be 2 here. If there's two terms up here, there has to be 2 in here. Two terms, 2 in there. And so that's done. Now I have a negative leading term. Notice also I'm checking descending order. So, if I think about descending order, I should flip this around because the 6 come, is before 4. There's descending order. Now I take the negative out because the leading, the leading uh, coefficient shouldn't be negative. And I see a 7 as a GCF. And I see an X common. And the smallest exponent of X is a 4. So there's the GCF, negative 7 X to the 4. Divide. And I get a x, negative 7, don't need anything, so I get x squared. Negative 7 divided by negative 7 is a 1. And 6 subtract 4 is 2. Or 4 plus 2 gives you 6. Negative 21 divided by negative 7 is a plus 3. And x to the 4 divided by x to the 4 cancels out. So I do not need any more x's with this 3. And e, I have three terms. And I have a descending order of 3, 2. That's understood to be a 1 there. So I have a negative leading term. So I take the negative out. And there's an, an x in each one of these terms. So I take an x out. Smallest power of x is a 1. There's the 1. So x cubed divided by x is x squared. Negative divided by negative is positive. x squared divided by negative x is a negative x. And a negative x divided by negative x is a positive 1. Note, 1, 2, 3 terms. So in here, there should be 1, 2, 3. Don't forget that 1. If you don't put a 1 here, when you multiply, you'll only have 2 terms and you won't have that x. How many marks did you get out of 5? Number 6, in relation to the trinomial x squared plus bx plus c, number 1, the b is the sum of the products of the outside terms and the product of the inside terms. So we practiced that in our video. So what we mean is that if I take an x plus 2 times an x plus 6, the this b, which is in my trinomial, is the sum of these two terms, 2 and 6. Notice the outside is 6x. Inside is 2x, so when you add them together, you get your 8x in your trinomial. And your first terms is going to be an x squared, and the last term is the 2, and the 6 gives you 12. So this trinomial is x squared plus 8x plus 12. So what we're saying here, the trinomial that results in the end, which is x squared plus 8x plus 12, the middle term, the sum, 8 B is this middle term, so B is a part of this middle term. So that number there is a result of the sum 
of the outside terms and the inside terms. So really what you're doing is just adding the two and the six together as a shortcut. And the C, which is on the end, which is the product, the C is the product of the last terms. So this 12 is the product of the two and the six. C is the product of the last terms of the binomial. So if you add them together, you get the middle term, which is eight. If you multiply them, you get a 12. And when you do your middle term, you have to have an X because of the two X's that are here being added. And give yourself five marks, one, two, three, four, five, one for each blank. And number seven, find, fill in, oh, no, this, find, find the blanks. That should have been a fill, fill. Fill in, fill the blanks, fill in, sorry. So if we multiply this by foil, we get first x squared. Outside is a 4x. Inside is 6x. And last is a 24. So when you simplify that, you get a 10x. You get x squared plus 10x when you add the two of them, plus 24. So the... 10, fill in blanks, the 10x, that's the 10, and that's the 24. But really, because these are x's, the shortcut here is that if you add the 6 and the 4, if you, the sum of 6 and 4 will give you the b is in the middle. The product of the 6 and the 4 will give you the last term your trinomial. So the shortcut is if you multiply all this out by foil like I'm doing here and add it up, you get a 10x and a 24 with the x squared. But the shortcut is when you multiply these two, you get an x squared. When you add these two numbers, you get a 10, but you put an x with it because of the outside inside. And if you multiply these two numbers quickly, you get a 24 in the end. So you go through foil like this, or you can quickly get your product by doing the sum of these two last numbers and the product of these two last numbers. Just a faster way to do it. Factor. We have a trinomial. In factoring, we have no GCF, so this is factorable. There's going to be double brackets. X squared is X and X. The product is negative 16 and the sum is negative. We always do the product. I always do the product first, then the sum after. There's the product, which is the C. There's the B, which is the sum, negative 6. So then we look at the factors of 16, which is 1 and 16, 4 and 4, 2 and 8. So the factors, this is the negative product, so it's guaranteed to have plus and minus in these blanks. So if, if there's a plus and a minus because the product is negative, that means the factors are differ by 6. 15, 0. So this must be a 2 and an 8 to go in here. But the negative 6 is in the middle, so it must be the larger number must be negative, smaller number must be positive. So add the two of these numbers, negative 6. Multiply the two of them, negative 16. Perfect. B. No GCF. Descending order. Notice, check the descending order, make sure. And we have an x squared, which is x and x. The product is positive 10, so it's a plus and a plus. And since the product is positive and the sum is positive, we have a plus and a plus. If that was a negative, then if the product is positive, I need two pluses or two minuses. The two signs that go in here, which are the same because the product is positive, must be the same as that one. And the factors of 10 are 1 and 10, 2 and 5. So my, because the two signs are the same, the factors are adding up. So that gives me 11, that gives me a 7. So 2 and 5 or 5 and 2. C, we have no, we have descending order, perfect, 2, 1, 0, that's a constant, and no GCF, so let's do double brackets, x squared is x and x, the product is a negative 22, and the sum is 9, that's a negative 22. Because the product is negative, I'm guaranteed to have a plus and a minus for my signs, because the product is negative. And 22 is... We always do a 1 and the number, and 22 is even, so it's 2 times 11. Oops, 11, not 10. 
So, because the, the signs are different, opposites, we will subtract. That'll give me a 21, and this will give me a 9. So I must put a 2 and 11 in, but the, the bigger factor has to be positive. So the 11 is positive, the 2 is negative. Add plus 9, multiply, 22. Perfect. And over here, we have no GCF. We have descending order, okay. So we do double brackets. To get x squared, we have x and x. And uh, it ends in a plus, so the product is positive. That means they're going to have two of the middle signs. There's going to be two negatives. Well, let's check. Multiply those two. Positive 15. Add two negatives. I get a negative. Perfect. Factors of 15 are 1 and 15, 5 and 3. And because the signs are the same, we're adding the factors up to get 8. 15 and 1 gives me 16. So it must be 5 and 3. 5 and 3 can go wherever you wish. 5 and 3 or 3 and 5 because the signs are the same. And how many did you get right? Put your score in and add up the page. Do that for each page. And in the end, you total your pages and you get the over 59 that's out in front. Number nine, factor. And we have, you say, well, notice I have to do descending order. Always remember descending order. I stress descending order. Make sure. The order is the x squared, then the x, and then the constant. The constant is on the right. It's in right, the right order, and I have no GCF, so I'll do double brackets. Double brackets means x squared is x and x. The product is a negative 14, and the sum is a negative 5. So, because the product is negative, I'll do a plus and a minus, automatic. Factors of 14, 1 times 14, and a 2 times 7, because it's even. The, the signs are different, so the factors differ. So the factors differ by 5. 14 and 1 is 13 when they differ, so it must be 2 and 7. But... Because I got different signs, that means a larger number, 2 and 7. 2 to 7 must be positive. And the 2 must be negative. Add these two numbers, plus 5. Multiply, minus 14. When you add these two, that's the B. When you multiply these two, that's the C. Put 1 over. Factor each completely. Hmm, that means I have to look. The first rule of factoring is look for the GCF. Is it there? I have a 2, a 14, and a 24. 2 is a common factor to three of these. There's no x common, so 2 is the only GCF. Only, no, no literal, no x's. 2x squared divided by 2 is x squared. 14x divided by 2 is 7x. 24 divided by 2 is 12. Remember, check. 2 times each one of these. 2 times x squared, perfect. 2 times 7x, perfect. 2 times 12, perfect. Now that I have 2 taken out by the GCF, I have a trinomial left, and let's see if that's going to be factorable. This is where I would do it on the sheet of scrap paper first, and then put the final answers in here. But x squared is x and x. The product is a positive 12, so I have two of the same signs. So the signs are going to be two pluses. How do I know? When I multiply those two, I get plus. When I add those two, I get a plus. So if this is a plus at the end right here, po positive product, I must have two of those signs that's in the middle. And what's the factors of 12 to give you a 7? Well, I got 1 times 12, I got 2 times 6, and I have 3 times 4. Because the signs are the same, the factors of 12 will add up. Nope. That's a 13, 8, and 3 and 4. Perfect. 3, 4, 4, and 3 makes no difference because the pluses are the signs. B, descending order, 2, 1, constant, perfect. I have a leading negative, so I take the negative out. You, again, think about taking the negative 1 out. Negative divided by negative is positive. Negative divided by negative is a positive. Positive divided by negative is a negative. So, when you take the negative out of all these terms, you're changing positive, sorry, negative to a positive, positive, negative to a positive, negative to a positive, positive to a negative. When you remove the negative, you're changing all the signs. Done. Negative is there. 
and this is a trinomial. Can we factor further? X and X. The product is a negative 7. The sum is 6. Now, because the product is negative 7 or negative, I'll have guaranteed to have a plus and a minus. And I always do the plus first and the minus second. There's a reason for that coming up later in factoring 2. So what are the factors of 7? The only factors of 7 are 1 and 7. So, but the larger number has to be positive. So it's a positive 7, negative 1. Add these two numbers, 6. Multiply these two numbers, negative 7. Done. Fully factored. Descending order, 2, 3. Oh, i got to change these around. 3x cubed minus 9x squared minus 30x. Now, 3, 2, 1. Descending order. And 3 is the smallest number. Is 3 a factor of 9? Yes. Is 3 a factor of 30? Yes. So I have to take 3 out. And there's an x in every term. So I take x out. And I take the smallest exponent. 3, 2, 1. 1 is the smallest. So x is in every term. There's the 1 understood. There's the 1 right there understood. 3x cubed divided by 3x is x squared. Negative 9x squared divided by 3x is negative 3x. Negative 30x divided by 3x is negative 10. If you multiply back 3x by each of these, you should get the 3 of these. There's 3 terms up here, so there should be 3 in here. 3x, and this is a trinomial. Factor as x and x. Factors of 10. Okay, let's do the signs first. That's the product is negative 10, so I guarantee to have a plus and a minus. And the product is negative 10. The sum is in the middle, negative 3. The factors of 10 are 1 times 10 and 2 times 5. So what factors of 10 will give you the 3? 1 and 10 will never give you a 3, no matter what you do. If you add them, you get 11. If you subtract, you get 9. Now, what? I got a 2 and a 5. The 2 and a 5 will subtract to give me a 3. Why subtract? Because the signs are different. So, that means the 5, the larger factor, has to be negative. And the smaller factor, which is 2, is positive. Add negative 3. Multiply negative 10. Perfect. I get 2 marks each. If you took the GCF out, you get 1 mark. If you did the other part, you get 2 marks. So, 2 marks each. 1 for the GCF, 1 for the final answer. Number 10, find the value of k if x squared plus kx plus 5, find the value if, if it's factorable over the set of integers. So find the value of k if this is, oh, I read this over, and you think I find it sometimes? Sometimes when you're reading, you read what you think is there. That's an is. That, sorry about that. If this is factorable over, the, we're going to factor with integers. That means it's 1, 2, 3, 4, zeros, and they're negatives. So, let's see what we have here. We have a product of 5. And we want to find what the sum is, which is the k. And because the product is positive, that means I could have a, a 2 pluses, or I could have 2 minuses. So the factors of 5 are 1 and 5. So if I put a 1 on a 5 right there, like that, so if I multiply them, I get 5. If I add, I get plus 6. If I multiply those two, I get 5. But if I add, I get a minus 6. Remember, these are x's here that we're going to factor. So I could have 1 and 5 or negative 1 and negative 5. So the possibilities of k, k could be plus or minus 6. If you have a 6 here, the factors of 5 have to add up because that's a positive. And so the answer is plus or minus 6. That's the possibilities for k. Two possibilities. Number 11. Is x squared plus 10x plus 25 a perfect square trinomial? Let's check. A perfect square trinomial has to have a perfect square here. So that's a 5 squared. So 25 is a perfect square. x squared is made up of as you can see, x squared is just x being squared. So these two are perfect square trinomials. The first term is positive and the last term is positive. So that's, this has to be positives here and here. 
and notice we have a 5 and we have an x if we multiply we multiply the 5 by the x we'll get a 5x and when we double it we get the 10 so the square root of 25 is 5 the square root of x squared is x if you multiply those two together 5x and double it you get a 10 and so that's yes that's a perfect square trinomial if it is then watch the shortcut we can do this we can say if that's a perfect square trinomial we can put the square out there and we can say that x squared came from x that 25 came from a 5 and because the product is positive and it has to be two pluses or two minuses so because it's a plus that's x plus 5 squared that's the shortcut but if you want to go by foil and go x and x and because it's, the product is positive we have two pluses good factors of 25 to give you a 10 must be 5 and 5 I mean 25 is a product could be 1 and 25 or 5 and 5 5 and 5 add to give you 10 so if you had those two multiplied binomials they're the same so we can write them as a square it's like 6 times 6 this is 6 squared so there's two ways to do it if you recognize it there's a perfect square trinomial then you give yourself one mark and how to factor Tri perfect square trinomial will come up again later on in other units number 12 factor completely is it in descending order? Yes. 7 factor 28, yes. 7 to factor 28, yes. So we take the 7 out. Is x common? Yes. Smallest exponent is a 1. So 7x is coming out. 7x cubed divided by 7x is x squared. Negative 28x squared divided by 7x is a negative 4x. 28x divided by 7x is a plus 4. 3, 2, 1, 2, 1, constant, perfect. And the trinomial is broken up into a binomial. And if we want to factor this, we get x and x ends in a plus, so we get two of the middles, two minuses. What factors of 4 will give you a 4? That's 2 and 2. 4 and 1 won't work. And you notice that's the same binomial, so we get it as an x minus 2 squared and besides that if you think about it remember that's a perfect square trinomial that comes from just watch the square root of x squared is x the square root of 4 is 2 the product is positive so we will have two of those signs so if that be the case square root square root and we multiply to get 2 x and we double it we got the 4 so that means that I can go x minus 2 all squared because that's a perfect square trinomial. Two marks. One for the 7x coming out and then one for that. And tote the page up and you get a mark out of 11. Now we're to page 5 of 5. 13. Factor each completely. Oh, now we have to do everything going through here. So let's factor. We got x squared minus 16, so that means we have um, double bracket, x squared is x and x. Notice that the product is negative 16, but notice there's no x, so that means the sum is 0, because there's no x, that means this is 0x understood. So what's the factors of, if the, I'm sorry, if if you have a negative 16 product, that means I must have a plus and a minus. So what's the factors of 16 that will add to give you zero? They must be the same factors, so it must be 4 and 4. That's the difference of two squares. Notice that's x being squared, and let's subtract 4 as being squared. So that's the difference, subtraction, of two squares. It's B. I cannot take a GCF out. So, this is, if you notice, this is a 2x being squared, and it's a 5 that's being squared. This is the difference of two squares. So, that's a 2x and a 2x, a 5 and a 5, 
with a plus and a minus. Difference of two squares, if you can do the square root of this term, which is 2x, you can do the square root of this one and get a 5, which is so, and you have the difference of two squares like this, then you can go 2x, 2x, 5 and 5, plus minus. Because when you add, the outside here is negative 10x, the inside is plus 10x, and they add to give you 0. That's why there's no x in the middle. C, I see a GCF called 3. Take the 3 out, I get an x squared minus 9. 3x squared divided by 3 is x squared. Negative 27 divided by 3 is negative 9. Looks like I have the difference of two squares. Why? Because that's an x being squared minus 3 being squared. So if that's the difference of two squares, I got an x and an x. The product is negative, guaranteed to be a plus and a minus. And the sum is 0 because there's no x in the middle, so that's a 3 and a 3. Difference of two squares. Recognize them, get used to them. D, descending order. So the x squared goes first and negative 36 goes second. Notice I have, this is the difference of two squares again. So the square root of x squared is x and x. The square root of 36 is 6 and 6. And I have a difference, so that's a plus and a minus. Why? Because that's a product of negative 36 and the sum is 0. Difference of two squares. No middle term. Sum is 0. 6 and a negative 6 gives you 0. Descending order perfect. I have to take out the negative. I take out the 2 because the 2 is a factor of 20. And there's an x in every term, so I take the x out. And the smallest exponent of x is 1. So 2x cubed divided by, sorry, negative 2x cubed divided by negative 2x is a positive x squared. Negative, positive divided by negative is a negative. 200 divided by 2 is 100, and x divided by x is 1. I don't need any x's. Notice again that the inside of this is possibly the difference of two squares. That's an x being squared, and that's a 10 being squared. If that be the case, there's an x and an x, a plus and a minus, and 10 and 10. Why? They add together to give you Zero. Zero. The x is missing. So the two terms are the same terms, but a plus minus. Give yourself five marks, one for each. Fourteen. Factor x squared plus four over the integers. Notice that's an x being squared and a two being squared. This is what we call the sum of two squares. The sum of two squares. When we do the two squares, the sum, that means we have, notice that there's a zero. The x is missing. So if the x is missing, how can you take the, take the factors of 4, which are 1 and 4, 2 and 2? If you take the factors of 1 and 4, you can't add them or subtract them. you you got to have to, the signs have to be, since the product is positive, I have two pluses, or I have two minuses. Since the product is a plus four, I have to have two pluses, two minuses. That's a plus and a plus. I had a minus there just then. So two pluses are two minuses because the product is positive. So how can you add two pluses to get a zero? How can you add two negatives to get a zero? So the sum of two squares can not be factored over the integers. It can be factored, but way up when higher math course in grade 12 or grade 11. Depends when you'll meet it in your uh, course, but it's later. So the teachers will say early, this cannot be factored over the integers. 15. Factor each. Okay, notice I have a fraction. If I have a fraction as a leading term, I take it out. This is the last section we did, removing a rational number. So let's take the one-half out, because the one-half is going to be your GCF. One-half x squared divided by, uh, oh, and there's also an x here, so right? I forgot the x. I was concentrating on the one-half. x is common. So when I divide one-half x squared by one-half x, I get an x. Now, 
I have to take the 5 and divide it by a half. That's 5 times 2 over 1. So that gives me a 10 and a positive. Notice a half divided by a half is 1. 5 divided by a half, there it is, that's 5 times 2 over 1. And there's no cancellation, so I get a 10. B, I have to take out this descending order, perfect. And there's no x common, so I have to take out the negative 2 fifths. Here we go. Three terms here, three in here. Negative 2 fifths x divided by uh, negative 2 fifths is just x squared. Now, let's go up on top here. I'm going to take 6 and divide it by 2 fifths. I'm not worried about if it's negative or positive, because a positive divided by a negative is a negative. So what is 6 divided by 2 fifths? That's the same as 6 times 5 over 2. The 2 goes into 6 3 times. 3 fives gives me a 15. That one is done. Now I have to take the 40 and divide it by 2 fifths. Again, I don't worry about the negatives or positives. Why? Because a positive divided by negative is going to give me a negative. So what's 40 divided by 2 fifths? That's 40 times 5 over 2. And 2 into 40 goes 20. 20 times 5 will give me 100. So if you multiply back 2 fifths times all three of these, you'll get those up there. Check it out. And three terms here, three in here. And negative 2 fifths, and that's a trinomial. Let's see if it's factorable. x squared is x and x. Ends in a minus, product is uh, negative 100, so it's a plus and a minus. And what's the factors of 100? 1 times 100. We got 2 times 50. There's a 10 in it, so it's 10 times 10. There's a 5 in it, so it's 5 times 20. So do I have them all? Now the factors differ. Product is negative 100. Factors differ. So they have to differ by 15. Nope, that's 99. Nope, that's uh, 48. 10 and 10 differ. Nope, 0. It must be a 5 and a 20. And the 20, the largest factor, has to be negative because it's negative 15. And there's the final factorization. Again, practice taking out the fraction, which is the leading coefficient. But this is not stress that often. Some courses do it, some teachers do it. 16. Simplify and factor completely. Let's do A first. We're going to simplify. So x times x, x squared. x times 6, 6x. If you treat that as an opposite, then you'll get a negative of 4x, which is negative 4x, and the opposite of 15 is negative 15. Because when you subtract, you add on the opposite. So that's a plus being a minus, a plus being a minus. Or, another little hint, let's put a 1 right there. Treat it as a negative 1 times. Negative times positive is negative. Negative times a positive is negative. Your choice. Add up your like terms. We always simplify. Done. There's my like terms, too. Can this factor? Factors of 15 to give you a 2. Looks like a 5 and a 3. Let's see. x squared is x and x. Its product is negative 15, so I have a plus and a minus. And the factors of 15 are 1 and 15, 3 and 5. 1 and 15, 3 and 5. What factors of 15 differ by 2? Because the fact the signs are different, the factors differ. So it's a 5 and a 3, but the larger one has to be positive. So it's a positive 5, negative 3. Add those two. 2. Multiply those two. 15. Perfect. So that's done. So that give yourself three marks. Now one for simplifying, two for factoring. Perfect. Or one and a half each, whatever you want. Let's do B. Uh, x squared times x, x cubed. x squared times negative 10, negative 10 x squared. 6 times x, 6x. 6 times 1, 6. 3 times x, 3x. Three, 3 times negative 2, negative 6. Now, if you want, you can put your like terms together, or there's only two terms that go together, so I'm just doing this fast. No, I better not. I better... Put the like terms together in descending order. So I'll do this, make sure. So there they are. Cube, squares, x's, and constant. 
So I'm going to add up the like terms. No cubes, no squares. And the x's add together to give me a 9. And the numbers cancel out. Mm, that's 0. And I'm going to factor. So I have to take out x, which is common. The smallest exponent is a 1. So that's an x squared minus 10x plus 9. When I divide, 3 take away 1 is 2. 2 subtract 1 is 1. And x divided by x is 0. There's no, you don't need an x. And if this is factorable, it's double brackets. x squared is x and x. The product is positive. So therefore you have two of the negatives. The product is positive. You have the same signs. So what signs? Same as the middle. And the factors of 9 to give you 10 has to be 9 and 1. Fully factored. Give yourself three marks. If you get as far as... Uh, simplifying, give yourself uh, one and a half marks. If you get the full factoring done, give yourself one and a half. Or simplify, give you one, GCF one, and the final factoring right here, another one. Put your score here, total the page up at a 16, and that's the end of that review. So when you get it all done, add up all the pages at the bottom, I'll, sorry, add up all the numbers at the bottom page, put the number over 59, Divide 59 into this numerator with a calculator with your hand pen and you get a decimal. Move the decimal place two places to the right and you get your percent. In other words, multiply the decimal by 100. So that takes us to the end of this review. How well did you do? Hopefully you did okay. You, like me, normally I make a mistake. No matter if I know it perfect, I'll always make a mistake. I do make mistakes. It's just in me. So if you like what I'm doing, click the like button, click the subscribe button, and uh, click the notification bell if you're a subscriber, and write a comment if you wish, and visit my math website, www.mathfullyexplained.com, and you'll see three sections. Me talks about my degrees and teaching experience. Um, video talks about teaching strategies you're going to help that I'm going to use in my videos to help you learn the math. And the content has the topics and the number of videos on each topic. The black font is what's online right now. And the red font, which will be made up later, will become gradually one at a time. So hopefully you enjoyed my video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.